Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Welcome to the Naguru Skies Hotel, where we are bringing you your favorite show, and that is Men. Yeah. The one show that lights up your Wednesday night and makes it more interesting than even your own wife. I dare say that. Now, we're here with the men. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> and tonight, okay. we're going to be poking. I'm not saying where, but we'll be poking the men. The ninny. Yeah, of the men, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> a lot of men traditionally, especially in African societies, believe that the more women you have, the richer you are. Some take it as a sign of wealth. But research shows that the more women you have, the poorer you are. So the question we're putting out there tonight is, is promiscuity one of the leading causes of poverty, especially in Uganda? Mm -hmm. Just don't go anywhere. The only way you'll find out is once we finish talking about it. Robert, good to see you. You're looking nervous. Yeah, because you're going to ask me a question of which I <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't have a wife, I don't have a lady right now, so you can ask this gentleman. Oh, what, right. what, but if you ask it for my mind, there is yes. the mind, just the mind can give you a, an excuse, but these people have answers. No, but we want to hear from you. <laughs> yes, you can't pass the bus. No, okay. Yes. Okay. Question is, do you think the more women you have, the poorer you become? No. Why not? A person who is very hardworking, a person who is very disciplined with their money, a person who is uh, uh, has the ingenuity, a person who is very creative, a person who is a risk taker, a per that person can have as many women as he wants mm -hmm. and he'll still be the richest man in the world. If, you, and if, that's, his, if that's, that's his vision, if that's his focus. So it's not the women. Because yeah. just this, uh, of recent, men have just become uh, complacent, people are lazy, people are not hardworking. So when research goes to such men that want to always be seen, they say, Saja Azukanga Limabere Gomukazi. I have never had this expression. <laughs> but <laughs> have you heard this? <laughs> I this is the first time. We must ask the pro <laughs> a new proverb. Uh, we must ask By the producer. Albert. Producer. <laughs> producer. <laughs> but yes, there's that. There's, I've heard that thing being said on the streets that Abasaja in Nakuzino, Azukanga, they are in the breasts of the women. So obviously, that what time are you waking up? Something like nine. Something yeah. like ten. So. You're not looking at the fact that he's woken up with a lady. You look at the fact that he is not working. You look at the fact that he is lazy. Those are the facts you're looking at. So that research that you have is questionable. Mm -hmm. That's why I would question the research because the facts are in African tradition is that the men that had actually had many ladies or had many wives were actually rich. They were, it was true. If you look at, they either had a lot of land, had so many cows, he had the children, because those women gave him daughters who he was giving down here and there, left and right, left and right. So the more, the more daughters he had, left and right. Uh, I'm not calling that the daughter, that's, that's how we, 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 we perceived uh, marriage and so they, they were actually rich. If you're a man who had one woman, there was a problem. Okay. That, then it, very, very, yeah, very powerful. Chris, <laughs> writing off what Albert has said, King Solomon, one of the wisest men who ever walked the face of this earth, but we also know he was known for how many wives and how many concubines. Do you think that the more you have, then the less you have in terms of finance? Well, uh, going by Solomon, uh, you, you don't have an equal yardstick on any measure. Uh, one, because, uh, you know, the Bible says that uh, the blessing of God makes one rich and adds no sorrow with it. And uh, when God blesses someone, he does not pull back the blessing. So Solomon was rich because he was blessed of God with wisdom. And, and Solomon, actually, when you read uh, the story around him, had this top and tread because he would uh, import horses from Egypt and chariots and sell them to kings and kingdoms around him. He had this huge mega business that was working for him. Um, as to whether that warranted him having 300 wives and 700 concubines, 
Uh, I don't think so. I think that, that in all the wisdom of Solomon, there was also a good dose of foolishness. Um, because wisdom is about... Contradiction. <laughs> no, I know. And life is a contradiction, right? So, so, so um, what God's advice was to Solomon is, is do not marry all these foreign women because they will draw you away from God. And, and Solomon didn't follow that advice, and he actually was drawn away from God by the time he died. I don't think he died in a, in a good place. But more so, when you read the book of Ecclesiastes, and I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this, so please allow me. When you read the book of Ecclesiastes, um, Solomon writes and he says that he did not deny himself anything under the sun. He tried everything. He did not, did not deny himself or his body anything under the sun. And believe me, anything means anything but then in Ecclesiastes he writes and I don't know a book in the Bible where someone retorts this phrase meaningless meaningless this life is meaningless so that means that he tried all these things out and he found that it was meaningless I don't think there is so much joy in having that many wives. I mean, if you want to try uh, polygamy, promiscuity, you can't beat Solomon. I mean, on his payroll. <laughs> the dude had 300 official wives, 700 concubines. How he made rounds through them, God knows. I don't know how you do it. I don't know where you get the time and the vitality. But, but... Yeah. <laughs> I, think that, I think that all of us are given a measure. God can never give you what you cannot handle. <laughs> No, I, th I, I think sometimes you give yourself what you can't handle, and I think that's what was Solomon's problem. But so, so I, I, I think that um, to, tie, to tie wealth to how many uh, partners someone has is a bit of a difficult argument to make. Because it's possible for you to have one spouse, uh, one wife, and you're financially illiterate and you're lazy and you're broke right and it's possible to have very many multiple partners and you are financially literate and you're hardworking and you prosper because the principles of making wealth are the same everywhere if you apply them the hand of the diligent will be made rich if you work hard you will make money I mean that, that doesn't say where you stay the night Okay, um, uh, you find many of these proverbial truck drivers who have got a wife almost at every stage from Mombasa all the way to Zaire. Okay, now it would, it, it would be helpful if the guy was concentrating his resources in one home, he would have developed much faster and, and more concretely. But you find the guy is dotted all over the map. Okay, you have more kids to raise and that kind of thing. So what I am saying is that uh, logically it's very difficult to make the argument that the more spouses one has is the less wealthy they will be because otherwise you would not have the Sultan of Brunei and all this kind of thing. Guys who have multiple partners. But I think that the argument would be more about the quality of life and the sort of fulfillment you get when you are sort of focused and you have it, it's, it's the argument about when you have an arrow get out of a bow if it's blunt it, it does not go as far as when it is sharp right and I think that that having a, a single spouse um, even on top of, of what I believe is biblically recommended, uh, which is having one spouse, it, it sort of helps you to sort of consolidate. And, and it helps you go much further. Because um, when you have so many you're dealing with, your interests are spread all over the map. And I can tell you that women have rivalries. rivalries. Yeah, so they start pulling in different directions. You bought Gundi Aka also me Aka. You bought so and so address even me. So imagine if you have so for Solomon you had to do that a thousand times. <laughs> Dude had a headache, permanent migraine for all his life. Not going anywhere. Colin. I think that the headache you're talking about was a different kind of headache for Solomon. But uh for the wife. 
Well, there was a head. With a it's, head. A diff <laughs> it's a different <laughs> headache. <laughs> headache. Anyway, so um, I, I I want to sort of go around and anchor this conversation back where it started. Does I think, and I want to ask the question: Does promiscuity cause poverty? And you have to sort of think about it like this. You have a hundred shillings. You have a very f most men have a finite amount of income. Every, there are very few people who don't know how much money they're getting at the end of the month. Most men know exactly how much money they're getting. They may not be disclosing it fully, but they know exactly how much money is coming in. They know Albert's business is going to do this. Kano well, no, these rentals are going to bring this. Omusala is this. All together, we are at this much. I'll take off, I'll pay fees, I'll take off, I'll do this. The practical side of sort of uh, wealth generation that, that Chris is talking about is people don't get wealthy by expending money. They don't get wealthy by expending resources. People get wealthy by taking that and investing it into things that will multiply. And sort of that's where my point of departure is. I, uh, I, if you, so, so you're there, you have one wife, you have uh, three children with this person, but on Tuesday, because you're going to stay with the Narumasi, you're going there. You only stay at Narumasi's place once every week, four weeks a month, but four, four days a month. But you pay rent there because you really want to show Narumasi that you have the muscle passage. and the power. Mm -hmm. Then there is uh, Nacheju, mm -hmm. who you also go, and for Nacheju, you go once a month, but Nacheju, you buy fuel, mm -hmm. full tank. And you pay rent. Mm -hmm. You may not pay rent. You may just be buying fuel. You may just be the fuel sponsor. You know, there's a fuel sponsor. There's a yeah, rent sponsor. sponsor. Mm -hmm. There's a, now the campus chick who you're buying, who Chantal, who you're buying for airtime. How you just burn those data. She says, eh, like this, you just give her data. That MBs, right? she's okay. Yes? Those are three outside yes. on yes. top of That's the one already at home. outside. The, the fuel you're buying at home, the rent you're paying at home, <laughs> and the airtime and data you're yeah. buying at home. It doesn't matter how rich you are, this sort of uh, separation and, and divesture of your resources continues to drain on how, how much can you invest, how much can you save, how much can you put away. And, and I think that you have, to, you have to go back and examine our culture and sort of see how the idea of men who can't, be prov who can't provide is so looked down upon and so shamed that this is true in the city. But it is also true in Kalangala on for a fisherman. Yeah. And I'm not saying fishermen are poor, I'm saying fishermen have money. But I'm saying it's it's true across income oh. segments. Even a farmer, the moment he has a bumper harvest of coffee, he may not he, because he lives in a village, he may not marry he may not marry another wife. But he, but when he, when he, when the neighbor's wife says, Hey, <laughs> And the buys a new mushanana. He's going to inject there as well, yeah. because because I, I think that our culture sort of uh, reinforces this idea of a strong man who provides and who has money. Mm -hmm. And so, and then now, if you think about that and come full circle, then you come back to the guys like Albert who don't have the money. I mean, I want to tell you guys a story. The first time I met Peter, the first time I met Peter, I was like Albert. I was skinny. I was so broke. I was just like two months into my first job. Peter walked into the office. He had a suit and a pink shirt. <laughs> Peter had we flowers. We need to go into the yeah. group. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to go I am telling a story. Talking about men and promiscuity. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back from the break. In case you just joined us, we're here at the Naguru Skies Hotel talking about men and promiscuity. But actually, the question that we're asking tonight is whether the more women a man has, the poorer he becomes. So, as I was saying, yes. Yes. the pink shirt, the sharp suit, and the bouquet Black. of flowers. Now, I'm not saying Peter was being promiscuous, but this is what I saw. Being a young guy who had no money, I knew that this is what the guy must do. And so you must work hard to be that guy. 
who brings flowers <laughs> at Collins workplace? <laughs> yes, randomly. Who must for just some chick because it's about showing up, and that's In the, a the picture. The, uh, homie, it just, it just, <laughs> <laughs> so, so we know, I like looking. that. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so if you circle back to guys like Albert, you know, who are still trying to make it in the world, mm. they, they are, in their minds, they're thinking, so how do I do this? How do I become a Peter? You say, I must work hard. I must make money. Because when I make money, I will bring flowers. And no one can say no. When I bring... To a, a guy in a sharp suit with flowers. Yes. <laughs> well, no, 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 you guys, you guys, you guys. You guys. So anyway, but, but, but the frame is sort of young people are modeling that behavior because they're seeing the men with money and power and access doing that. And so it sort of becomes a self-propagating culture because young guys are losing girlfriends to guys who have money, guys who have access. But even also, very truly, that guys who already have partners. So guys know, you guys know your wedding is in uh, three months, but you'll approach a chick and, and the guys are like, yeah, no, no, guy, no, no, no. a guy knows that the, the guy who has taken his girlfriend is, going, is married, but, yeah, but to, to, um, it, just, uh, Albert, and I think okay. this is where you come in, because yeah. currently we are seeing a movement and it's being called the sponsor movement. Blesser. The blessers, yes, yeah. sponsors, where there are these guys, okay, who some of them even are called daddy yo yeah. because they are... <laughs> They are, they are the older generation, but we are seeing them sweep the girls. Okay, now, does that put you guys in a situation where, like Colin saying, you're just also saying to yourself, "Wait, when I get money?" In fact, uh, I, was, I was going to, but I'm not rebut, but I was going to add on to what you said. It's not, I wouldn't blame the sponsors mm -hmm. because you don't blame someone for their actions right now. That's a topic for another day. You can. You can want to throw the blame on the ladies, you want to throw the blame on the sponsors, but I wouldn't blame the sponsors because um, one day it may be me and people blaming me. So I don't want to throw blame on to my, the gentlemen out there. But what I can say is <clears throat> the gentlemen, uh, the younger gentlemen now, I feel, they feel challenged. It's, they don't, you see, now we don't have the time to say, ah, when I get, so what do I have right now? If what I told, do I what do I have right now? I have 10K. Okay, you buy a KFC. Ah, KFC, 20K. Let me borrow money. Mm -hmm. I, think, I had to take it. Oh, let me do this. Let me do this. So, if you're talking of poverty, if you look al along those lines, maybe you're going to say the guy who has nothing will become completely broke. Like, who just go, it's it's negative. Said, yeah. just enter negative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I want to assure you, if you're talking a man who has made his money, to start telling his, he, the businesses, are not run by those ladies most of the time because mm -hmm. gentlemen these days don't trust ladies. Mm -hmm. Many of the, those days you trust. Is put, that a generalization? I, I'm not. You, no, no. I'm feminist to agree with what you're saying. I, 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 my, you, you know me with feminists. That's another topic for another day. <laughs> Just put that under the rug. You're walking into a hornet's yeah, nest. Like, so that's why you have to you have to avoid those those bees. Mm -hmm. So my point is, men men these days don't trust. They don't trust. Major, not majority, but some men don't trust the ladies. So. We are, enter, we, are, we are in this phase where my money is my money, how I spend it is my business. You, I can, I will give you, I give you, I spread out uh, the wealth equally. And if I have side incomes, side dishes, mm -hmm. side meals, it's not a problem because it really does not affect. It doesn't. It, wow! How, when when Bill Gates throws money to Africa, have he doesn't? He doesn't throw money. really. Okay, when he's <laughs> aiding, he's aiding yeah. everyone. He's so he doesn't even move the wealth of Microsoft. Doesn't doesn't even shake. What shakes them is when people stop buying the equipment. Now, what am I trying to say is majority we're talking promiscuity is is in, in the young in the younger generation like mine, it is not it's not uh, when you're doing research you would not uh, get as much information. Why? It's because when you don't have people are not with you, people are not with, me, with you. you don't have any business with anyone. When you, the ladies don't even look you, they, you, you don't even, even the shoemaker, they look you say, oh, well, you're not putting on shoes, you don't have anything. But when you have, <laughs> and, 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 and the he has been told about blessings, and you, you, when you're blessed, blessings keep pouring, keep pouring. You find yourself, hey, you've got this side dish, but you've got a, a bigger business. You, you get another side dish, you have a promotion. 
You have another side dish you have bought in wait, a company. Wait, wait, wait. Sometimes <laughs> all those three side dishes attract an eater. I'm telling you, like you, you find problem. yourself you're going to Kenya. No. And you... Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on from that. You're such a monkey. <laughs> but Chris, yeah. now, am I wrong to say that that is an African way of thinking? And I'll tell you why. If we look at some of the wealthiest countries, actually most of the wealthiest countries in this world, vis-a-vis -vis the, 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 the size of the country and the, uh, and, and the wealth, minus the, the Chinese, they are not the, most, the highest populated countries. I mean, look at countries like Finland. I mean, um, especially, the, just say, the Nordic countries. They've got um, a very low population, but they work hard. Um, I've also heard people say, I don't know, that one of the strengths, especially the Caucasian communities have, is they have a timetable for a lot of things. They're very organized, have a timetable for a lot of things, including sex. So when a man is, has to, talk about like, sorry, when you're, you're busy servicing, left, right and centre. Do you have enough energy left to work? <coughs> so, so, Peter, I, I think that, um, I mean, everyone who knows me would know that I am I'm not a proponent for promiscuity. It, it's, it's wrong on so many, many levels. Uh, um, it, it's the stuff it does to you, the stuff it does to your multiple partners, the risks it exposes you to, but but even beyond that is the kind the quality of life that your children enjoy or don't enjoy as a result of you being all over the map. Um, uh, there's a certain um, and and this was a crude joke, but there was a certain guy who uh, had about 65 kids and. You know, he, he, he would come uh, to visit uh, some of the kids and were in school with them. And, and, and the boys had this joke. I don't know how far true it is, but, you know, he, he sort of gathers the kids and they all come. And, but then among them comes another child and says, you, you, what's your name? And then the kid says his name. The guy was a Muslim. Kid says his name and says, who is your mother? So, so the guy says, my mother is uh, whoever from this. Oh, okay, yeah, you come, you eat. Because he doesn't know who, yeah, who the kids we, are. Yeah. I mean, you have 65. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even when you have five kids and they're running all over the place, you're like, uh, yeah. Peter, James, John, what? And you, you can't remember that you're looking for Albert and he's right there before you, but you don't remember that name. Mm -hmm. 65 is a problem, yeah. okay? Um, so the kind of life, <laughs> seriously. I'm just thinking about how you select the names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of 65. I know that exactly. it's work. Right. Yeah. So, so, but, but when you think about it, um, so the quality of life that your children have or enjoy, the, the kind of things that a child should get from a father, for example, um, the wisdom they tap from you, lessons they learn from you, coming alongside you, modeling after you, learning your business or your trade and that sort of thing. That's rarely possible because they don't have proximity, all right? And so, so the quality of life of a child, of, of, you know, of a one Colin who's got one wife and has his sons and all that, and he's present, and they, they, they see him and say, okay, so uh, dad, dad, when you go to work, what, does, what do you do at work? So you break it down. This is what I do. Okay. Um, then one day they come to you with you to office and they see what work looks like. So you, you start passing on this stuff to the next generation. So when the Bible says that, that, that uh, a, man, a man who's got sons is like a man who's got a quiver full of arrows, right? Um, and, and he will stand strong at the city gates. In other words, will be respected and that sort of thing. But it's an idea of there is a wealth that happens when you pass on yourself to your children when you multiply yourself and so you are you're extended and, and and you're stronger and 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 you have posterity that's very different from a person who has dropped seed all over the map but isn't it the same thing no no not quite 
So, because so that's still your option. So, 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 so that, that, that the thing is like, <laughs> it's not about biology because mm. in just one shot of semen, when the man ejaculates, there is about one million sperm mm. in billion, there. Billion. A billion, mm. right? Swimmers. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not about how many swimmers you can... Hot chops. Yeah, like mm -hmm. catching to some... Or eggs, whatever it is, because you, you, you know, it's not about us spreading seed, it's about the quality of life and the quality of seed that we are passing on. So, but I think that there is, there, to, there is something to, to, be, to be looked into in terms, of, in terms of a certain level of poverty that you get in the quality of life you're passing on and the quality of citizen you're raising. Yeah. But I, I, I want to sort of come back to that and say. Not all promiscuity will result into procreation. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? Absolutely. It, it won't. No, 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 that's no. a given. So, yeah. so, and, so, and so, so if you dial it back and you come back to sort of that action, the, the, the conscious decision to sort of... And, 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 and you have to think about it. You have to... And uh, uh, this is not policing anyone's identity or reality, but it's easy for us to sit here and talk about, you know, a guy has money, therefore he can have as many women as he wants. But but we are all in a society where you know people, women who have three, four boyfriends or men friends or blessers or sponsors who take care and fund their various needs. It whether whether those people are taking sacred favors in re return or exchange for that, that's a different discussion. But then that becomes the reality of their lives. And 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 if you if you're really talking about quality of life and and poverty of spirit, I think that that's sort of that's sort of a fertile ground for so, sort of if you if you feel like you need four different people to work every day and provide for your needs because because you what God gave you is so special that when they test it their wallet just snap open. I think that I think that those are conversations that we need to have about. Yeah. And it's not even a morality conversation. It is yeah. what happens when this person has a child? What kind of children are they raising? What kind exactly. of behavior are they modeling? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This 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 woman who's being supported by sponsors. Now we have a few examples who we look at and we say, Oh my god. They're doing well. On right? Instagram. They even get government contracts. They are out there touring our country. Like it's fine. It's okay. Oh my God! Yeah. But I, I don't live here. Okay. <laughs> you all have to live with this. We are on social media. We see this. <laughs> but but what I'm saying is, we have these people, and people emulate them. People look up to them, and they want to emulate their behavior. Mm -hmm. If you imagine that this is how people are making a living, how then? I, I mean, I mean. That means no one is working. Because yeah. if you're a person and you're followed by 100,000 people, and of those, 20,000 decide we're going to model your behavior. That's 20,000 people who are not working or looking for sponsors. How many sponsors are there? Peter, Chris, Colin, Albert. No, Chris is not in those. No, <laughs> yeah, no it's a for argument. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, yeah. there's a finite number of sponsors. If yeah. all the girls refuse to work, then I what know. are we going to do? The, the stupidity of this is they don't understand. Because men are greedy, they're never going to stop. They just reduce the portions. Yeah. So the more people who refuse to work, the smaller portions from the blessers everyone is getting. Yeah. Okay, those are very strong words from Colin. Now we do have to go into a break. We're here at the Naguru Skies Hotel talking about men and promiscuity. Is it a key to poverty? Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> Welcome back from the break in case you've just joined us. We're in the last segment of this show that is talking about men and promiscuity and asking the question as is it a key to poverty? This is <laughs> where it becomes a bit tricky. Now, what do you mean when you say a key to poverty? Yes, the like, more like promiscuous you are, that's just a ticket. No, 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 no. Peter, Peter, Peter. There's, I don't think that there's a causative relationship between poverty and promiscuity. I think that in certain cases, people who sleep around, men, who feel the constant need to 
fund their conquests or take care of them will end up in you know serious financial situations mm -hmm. yes yeah but but if you think about the reverse promiscuity in women actually is does an opposite curve it grows yes it grows resources it grows networks it grows contacts but, 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 it grows but networks. also it's possible to have yeah. someone yes. who has nailed down financial principles yes, yes. and is making lots of money mm. And regardless of whether they're promiscuous or not, mm -hmm. continues to make more money. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I personally find that that argument, um, t to make that link and, and put it across the board as a, as a truth, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think, think is, 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 is weak. Mm -hmm. I think tenuous. it's a weak argument to make. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I in no way think that it's advantageous to be promiscuous. Right, I, I, I just I just think that the the, the, the foundation of and the framing of, of this question uh, leaves a lot to be desired because I think it's that that only fits a certain pocket of, of a, a type of man who or woman uh, yeah <laughs> but, but who who, who um, and here we're talking men at least okay. for starters who who um, is 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 not of 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 much means uh but is is a proverbial player and has got to start up this thing it's like imagine if you had if you if you woke up in the morning and you had to go start the engine of about 20 cars okay so you go start this one start that one start that one start that one start on and and your and your deal is you want to drive to town so, so then you drive this car five meters and then you go start the other car five meters, five meters, five meters, five meters, five meters, 20 cars. And then you go to the next five meters. It's going to take you a long time as one guy to drive 20 cars to town. Mm -hmm. you know, you're going to arrive at work in the evening. Drive your because car. you cannot drive 20 cars to work at the same time. Yeah. And, and that's the problem because men, the way God created us is we are focused beings. Like we focus. So, so if you have the capacity to, be, to do as well as you're doing, when you have all these relationships, imagine if you had one and you had uttermost focus. Just imagine how far, how much farther you would go. Yeah. If, you can, if a guy can seriously drive, drive 20 cars to work, and get there and get there <laughs> at some point on that day. <laughs> yeah. oh Imagine God. how efficient that guy would be. Bugema has called it God mode. Yeah. 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 Imagine how efficient that guy would be if he was driving one car to town. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So so I, I think it's it's just the whole thing of of there is a certain level of focus mm -hmm. it gives you for you to be in one relationship. A committed relationship and 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 and, and it's secure because um, there's a guy um, who who wrote a book about about, about marital bliss and, and he said that the the original description of the word woman was about the one who surrounds right about the one who surrounds a man and even in the in the in the biological arrangement of an engagement between a man and a woman, a man is surrounded. Mm -hmm. In the in the way life works, when a man has a, a stable relationship with a woman, she surrounds you. She wants to know what's going on with you, which friends you have, the assets you have. Have you seen the demonstration? Yes. Yeah. The the, the assets <laughs> the assets you have and all that stuff. So that so that you can be aided to, to consolidate yourself and be able to, to, to be projected much further, mm -hmm. right? So, so um, I, I keep telling this to guys. I say, in the Bible, best of my knowledge, there's only two persons that are called helpers. Mm -hmm. One is God, the Holy Spirit. The other is a woman. Now, the last time I checked, um, you get help from someone who is sharper than you or better than you. Like, Peter, if I come to you and I need help in some area, you need to be better than me in that area. Right? Yeah. So when God gives you a helper, that person is better than you at certain things. Mm -hmm. 
So if you don't use your resident help, yeah. you are cooked. Now the challenge with promiscuity is you no longer have helpers but drainers. You're every like Santa. Yes. So everyone is looking. You have elves. Yeah. It's, 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 it's like you're a pot of marwa. <laughs> yes. And everyone has their straw in and they are pooling mm -hmm. out of you. Mm -hmm. And no one is helping to build you. So I think that that's, that's the challenge with promiscuity. That you, you're not as efficient as you could have been. You're not projected as far as you could have gone. I, 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 and that's a challenge I want, that I want, men... I want, I want to come back on... I want to just come back on some, one, one small, small thing. So, so as much as Chris makes, you know, common sense and logical and, you know, I just want to sort of add another perspective. So you see, there is a biological imperative to have diversity in offspring. Because how do we get better at things? We must practice. So, okay. so the more people Albert practices with, by the time he settles down to his single arrow, he, he mm -hmm. has been yeah. he has been engulfed so many times that he has become good. Because that's how people become good at these things; they practice. But you know what the challenge is with that, um, and I'll, I'll just throw that in as well. The challenge with that is that. Um, there's such there's such a thing as having soul ties yes and so you have your your soul tied with so many people, people. the person who matters you find nothing yeah left. like there's you, there's yeah. nothing you're offering you like it's some hollow thing present but not alive i want to add some uh, different uh, perception perspective on this that research has it that you can easily uh, get drained of your creative juices, juices, the hard-working juices, that zeal. For example, if you get a, a, a man who is focusing on one lady, uh, after that, he is not as, uh, after the activity, is not as strong, is not as, uh, is lazy. Yeah. So that even the day after, he's still in that, he's still uh, disoriented, he's still, after some time he gets there. Now, if you have multiple partners, Chances are you're going to have uh, so uh, so many of those episodes happening for so long, so often, okay? And you find uh, instead of if let's get a man who is a man, you find that a man. Uh, if uh, there's research of they did on presentation, they got a guy and he had sex the previous night, and he presented. Then they got a guy who had been starved for about three days, presented. They get a guy who had been starved a week, presented. Yeah. Now, they, 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 they got to find that the person who had spent a week <coughs> was sharper, mm -hmm. just a bit sharper, was just a bit, so, so, even, so even, I want, I even, want, I want first, to speak into this, I actually know this, I, first, 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 yeah. even when you get the drivers, even the footballers, they, they tell the ladies, stay away for a while, we need these people, sharp, even Formula One, they so tell the, the ladies, sex you have, no, 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 the, the first, sharper first, you are. That, that, that's your comment. What I'm saying, this is this is what I'm saying. That I'm, we're talking about having a promiscuity, having multiple patterns. You will have so many of those episodes. So chances are that you will not be as productive. You'll not be as sharp as you ought to be, as you could be. So 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 let me speak into this. So so the science behind it is every time you have sex, you lose a certain amount of testosterone. The longer you don't have sex the more there is a testosterone build up in your, your system in your system, system. Yeah. but what does testosterone do testosterone is the gene for masculinity it dials up aggression it dials up competitiveness it dials up sort of uh, the qualities that make us sharper mm. more focused more direct more aggressive the will to compete the will to yes. win that's all in that testosterone mm. so if you're a boxer you need you need your your testosterone yeah, at a high. Yeah, yeah. high. If you're an athlete and you need to compete, you need to finish the race in a place where guys die. If you're running a 42-kilometer yeah. marathon and you want to come out in the top three, yeah. homie, you, you have better really have your testosterone yeah. at an all-time high. Mm -hmm. Testosterone also helps muscle recovery and all of these things. So uh, how quickly sort of mm -hmm. your body recovers. So you find that, yes, mm -hmm. it is true, and it is true in work. If guys... Which is why, like, married guys become so agreeable. Because yeah. mm. they're just like, they don't have the edge. They don't yeah. have the, hmm, hmm, anyway. 
But but guys who are not having sex, mm. that the guys that are fasting in the office, that the guys who are playing the politics, they're playing cut not, food, not that, they are on if, the edge. If, they are even when he's sharp. vibing, yeah. even when he's going to vibe, the guy hasn't had sex, mm. he will be so he can he's precise. He's so precise. The guy who's always having sex, you, you go home and you yes, no, the guy me. Is, uh, uh, <laughs> you see, so and and so so you think about it. I, so so that sort of anchors. Mm. His, I think I, I think if you think about it, if you sort of take that. That route into it, yes, you know, promiscuity could absolutely reduce your your your, your, your yeah, yeah. drive and and, and and need to succeed. But I think that what Albert hasn't sort of considered yeah. is that is that they are the cumulative experience. I'm not so sure about that. Allows you to stay ahead of the curve. No, no, I agree with that general flow of thought. I totally agree that 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 it takes away from you. We could be. It's very easy for someone who just dials in or listens in on on this show to 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 catch the conversation at this level when it's really a conversation at that level. Because at the fundamental, a guy who um, worked from when he was 20 and is now 35 for 15 years has been setting up businesses and systems and has got uh, branches of, 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 of all this business and there is a system that brings him money and he doesn't have to work, but that system is bringing him money. The truth is that it doesn't matter whether he's draining his testosterone yes. every day. The system makes okay. him yeah. money. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and even though I really would desperately would have wanted to link those two things, mm -hmm. it's, a diff it's a weak argument to make. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. for an ordinary guy who's got to make things work, right? Mm -hmm. That argument holds water because, man, you you are you are the system. <laughs> you are the system. If if you're on downtime the whole time, every day you, you, you can't win. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that so I, I guess for me I wanted to say that we, this comp, this particular argument holds in some respects yes. and not others. Mm -hmm. But what I want to maintain the your whole way through. Okay, so yeah. this is my party shot. I think what I want to maintain the whole way through. Peter, what are you doing? Peter has asked me to. Are you ending to, to the have show? My Why don't you just go home and leave us here? <laughs> Testosterone at work. Do you see? Yeah, he's, he's oh, stuck. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. That's why he needs to go back. To I know. Uh, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, but, but really, I, I, I think that, um, I think that the argument about promiscuity leading to uh, poverty holds in certain respects. And I know that men who are financially literate, have built systems for business, are most probably not going to be, um, their, their finances won't be encumbered by their promiscuity. But they will not go as far as they could have gone if they were not promiscuous. And I think that that's, that's a thought that men need to hold uh, and, and think through. And I think, you know, in, in finality, what I would like to say to us guys is, is that when you stop to think about it, at least from a biblical perspective, um, marriage is a reflection of God's love for his people. And he's committed the whole way and he's not two-timing or three-timing. There's something beautiful about focus. When a woman knows you are for her 100%, you get the best help that you can get from her. And what that does to you is it projects you much further. When you're two-timing, three-timing, you are like a pot of marwa and everyone is draining you. Yeah. You choose. Colin, your parting shot. You know, I always say that Chris sometimes comes from, from a place that most of us not are, not, are, not, are not strongly, you know, I, those we cannot identify with yeah. those, those, those who are closed for us. <laughs> it feels like that. I know it's achievable, yeah. but just for ordinary guys out there, for guys who are struggling, I mean, you don't have to struggle if you're being promiscuous, homie, you're enjoying, you know, you're not living like the rest of us. It's, it's, 
So I think that if you think about, if you net out the positive and the negative, so whatever you're enjoying, you're losing in resources, you're losing in time. So, so we didn't even talk about the amount of time you lose, dude. Mm -hmm. Lots. Just the wearing out of your bones. You have no sign of your fluid because you're out there just ejaculating. You're just like, you're really just wasting your life and your God given talents. But you consider the resources, you consider the time, you consider the wear and tear on your body, you consider the fact that you will never, it's hard for you to achieve a, a lot of well, significantly great things. I, I, I think that, one, I think that, you know, Peter should have rethought this topic. That's. You know, my, my, but, but, but in sort of closing it, I think that I sort of side with Chris that, that, that people who have focus sort of become a sharper arrow and they go farther. And maybe, you know, in life you can be mediocre or you can be the sharper arrow. It's a choice. And sometimes at men, we don't have to take a stand. We just lay the choices and we go home. Albert. I don't know whether to speak for the, those who are carrying out the activity or to speak my mind. Yes. But uh, your mind would be good. Are, are, are those two not the same? No. <laughs> like you. Is, no. Yeah. Speak for yourself. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so all I can say is the, the millennials out there <clears throat> and these people, these ladies out there, before you have, bef make you focus on making your money focus on just have have the longer have the, have a bigger dream you know this is small right? they keep talking about the goat race you set the, out the goats but when it's about to reach the the finish line stop, gra stop, stop, grass stop. and st wants to run back to, that goat race is a very good story i'll tell it to you one time so have the bigger dream they, you have a lot of potential out there a, a lot of your people out there are so skilled so creative and they are just draining their juices. So it's very, it's imperative that gentlemen out there do your best to 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 to, to work hard. Well, you know they keep saying African land. You know we have gold, but the Africans here have bad poop. But because they can't use, so don't use the, your first instinct that tells you. Meander, meander. Use the gold. Look at the gold around you. There's better and greater out there for you. My my ideas are all over the place because I would have wanted to speak for those uh, those men who are, who you guys have not spoken for. Because those men have their money. Most of them have their money. But I will not speak for them. I'll just say those millennials out there who are like me, still struggling. Uh, you keep the struggle Don't, and keep the testosterone. 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 Keep it. Keep it on the high. Yeah. Other, so that you can you can beat these gentlemen because I'm very certain we, if they are high theirs are so low because they are drained by their ladies so if yours is high I'm sure you can uh, you you'll have not an edge okay. but you'll yeah. be I yeah. think we get yeah. what yeah. you're yeah. trying to say <laughs> finishing <laughs> the show <laughs> on a <our> high <laughs> skies talking about men and promiscuity and interrogating the question as to whether that is a key to poverty mine is very simple. Just stick to one woman. Life is so much easier that way. Have a good night. God bless. And we will see you next week only on NTV.